Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, Mike from around the world, folks. Uh, Mike, great to have you tonight once again. Wow, there's a lot going on, a lot going on. Uh, yes. And uh, the Middle East and, uh, you know, everything happening, the volcano erupting in Iceland, the earthquake off the coast of Florida, 4.0. What does that mean? Uh, the atmospheric river destroying California. King, There's cancer in the kingdom uh, with, with King Charles. Uh, it goes on and on and on. And then, of course, the Supreme Court um, and their ruling is coming. Whether Trump will remain eligible, I believe he will. But I want to start tonight, Mike, just start with what's behind me. These are coffins. They found 33 of them in Thailand in a cave. They're 2,300 years old, and they were 13 foot long. And according to their, they're saying is they have 33 unique individuals. So they're going to test the DNA to try to understand their ancestors. I don't know if these are uh, Nephilim giants. I don't know. They don't say. They just say they're unique. Uh, we wanted to get your take on it, what you may know about these 33 coffins in Thailand. Uh, Thailand is full of surprises. Uh, <laughs> has, been, it has been for a long time, but uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that they are um, extraordinary. Let's put it that way. All Extraordinary. Right. They they found other digs. There have been other digs in time and, and things that have recently recently been uncovered through uh, LIDAR. Um where they essentially removed the jungle from an overhead shot, right? And they can tell they can look at the details in the ground. It's uh it's quite extraordinary what the world is is what they're uncovering with LIDAR. But uh they had other digs and, and, you know, people buried who had no um, facial features. Like, for example, what? a skull, a skull with no nose, no eyes, no, no orifices for ears or any of that. Just a mouth, right? Uh, they found an entire site like that. Well, how did these? And these were, these were bones, right? These were yeah, this... actual bones, skulls. Yeah. With no no eyeballs, no nose, no orifice for the nose, for the um, eyes, ears, sinus cavities, none of that. Cranial sutures, uh, they were there, but they were odd. Not quite yeah, like the not uh, human. some of the giant Nephilim skulls, but, uh, you know, they were, they were different. So digs like that are not uncommon. So there's They're a lot not. more. So even though this might have made it in the news... You're saying there's more. There's more digs like this. There's more things that's being found out there. We're just not oh, privy yeah. to it. There's a lot coming forward. Um, a lot of things will come forward that will just, uh, it's going to turn everything upside down. It really will. Wow. All right. So now that takes it to another level that we may not just be talking about giants. We could be talking about some type of uh, uh, different race, uh, reptilians, maybe something else. Something other kind of I in you know entity. Well, you know what, Pass on in in Genesis six, of course, uh, the Nephilim that were also after the flood. It says they were before the flood and also after that. If you look at what the uh, fallen angels corrupted animals and yeah. humanity, right? So that means you had great deformities in in animals in the animal kingdom. He had great deformities in people, whether by heights, looks, uh, mixture, uh, lab experiments, essentially. And they were alive after the flood, right? Um, so it, it's not too strange uh, that they would come across all these things. Plus, they have separated uh, what they have. Uh, most of these digs yield you know, some pretty unique things, like, like 40. Who has a 40-foot sandal? Right, I believe they they what? pulled those out. No, what was that about no. 2016? You're saying a sandal, a foot, a forty foot, a forty foot sandal, right? Forty foot, uh, a sandal, sandal that was forty feet long. That evidently had been worn, um, with the toe prints in it, right? Things like that. That's not right? Bigfoot. There's, there's that's, no explanation. That's not Bigfoot. That. That's not no, Sasquatch. That's, not Bigfoot. that's something else. That's something else. That's something else. And and um. When it comes to the the bones that they find, 
uh, for example, the fossils, right? Um, most people are accustomed to science and, and fossils are found that are millions of years old, right? You don't find a fossil of a common day deer anywhere, right? But when Mount St. Helens blew, right? Do you not know that the mud and the water pressed down on some of the animals, the plant life and everything else, and it fossilized everything in less than five years. So some of these fossils, Pastor Paul, are not as old as what you think. Wow. They're not as old as, uh, as science yields. But two-ton axes, uh, a 400-pound fork, uh, like an eating utensil, 400 <laughs> pounds. What, what, what do you do? That was in <laughs> Afghanistan. Right, it, it was a, uh, it was almost like a cutlery set dug up in Afghanistan. Okay, you got to be talking about yeah. something that the, these creatures about the size of mountains. I mean, walking around. Are these I don't know watchers? how big they were. Or, I know. don't know how big they were, right? But the same uh, utensils that we had, they obviously had, but they were much bigger. So something happened here, and like I said, you know, it's going to be a lot of things brought forward uh, this year, uncovered this year. One of the biggest problems is they have no placement for this information, right? Uh, it scares people to death. These are yeah. undeniable things, right? If you if you saw an arrowhead that was the size of a human body, uh, what would you think about that? What are you going to do with that? And what was what were they shooting with an arrow that big? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, it's you're uh, this is be this is when I mean I've struggled with something. 13 to 15 foot in size. I've struggled with that, but I know it's true. We got too much proof. We got scriptures everywhere that tells us that these things were huge. But now you're talking about something that's off the charts, off the charts. I mean, yeah, almost well, godlike, you know? I mean, we're yeah. talking. Um, I, I just think that, um, you know, this world has is, is got layers and layers. I believe that Christians could know the truth, but the problem is we're educated or indoctrinated. Um, by the world, which teaches us to be experts on what does not exist, right? right? And let's go ahead and face it. Fantastic stories are all over the place. You don't know which ones to believe, right? right? right. And so it, it, you, you can't go down too many rabbit holes. You, you know, your life will be tied up. But um, some sort of uh, forthcoming individual group uh, will, will, they'll begin to all over the world begin to provide. Uh, evidence for some of these things. Uh, people have dinosaurs, for example, right? Yep. That's clear evidence. Yep. In my opinion, of Nephilim. It's clear yeah, evidence of yeah. Nephilim. Um, and it's important for some reason that they continue to introduce the reptilian species to every human being on Earth. Every child knows about dinosaurs. Why? In every country, every child yes. has to learn about dinosaurs. But why and um but they don't know, but they don't learn about giant but they don't learn about giants that no well uh, you know you know what by not knowing by not knowing uh some of these dinosaurs by the way the the what people see in museums are not the actual bones the actual bones of dinosaurs are irradiated right they're radioactive and people can't get really get near them so they make replications of them or they encapsulate those bones and things uh, they have made up a lot of creatures, right? Wow. That they scientifically deduced were real. The bones are real. Um, but some of the bones are so large, they can't even, there, there's no way they can use them, right? Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah. And why would a dinosaur have vocal cords? Well, I mean, I don't know if they were talking. You know, like a human being. Just like a human being. Um Cavities in the skulls were a bit different, right? They do match some of the elongated skulls, different features like that that are far different than the animals that we have. And so I mean, it's quite clear that something tampered with life on Earth, right? Something, and we know some, what that was. Yeah, we know that. We know that. Uh, let me ask you this question, then. We'll, we'll move to another level here, another area. Um, King Charles has come down with some type of cancer. Uh, went in for prostate uh, procedure, and then cancer was found. I don't know if it's prostate cancer or maybe some other type of cancer, because, you know, but it's certainly cancer in the kingdom. Now, uh, the Buckingham Palace has a hospital inside it, basically. Doc, usually they don't go to hospitals. I mean, the hospital comes to them. 
So there's something significant maybe happening here. He's He has said he's not going to do any of his duties. He has basically turned that over to Prince William. Harry's flying home, trying to see if they need him. Do you, uh, what's, what, what have you heard so far? Is, is there a significant problem here? Uh, in, um, it's unusual. It is unusual. It's highly unusual. Well, for one, it's too, it's too public, right? Right. And, and, and that, that, uh, that, that family, that, that, uh, kingship was in a bit of trouble as far as optics were concerned. This will elicit some sort of, uh, sympathy, right? right? right. It's almost like it's planned. Um, and, and then of course the two sons come back, uh, one begins to exercise authoritative powers, you know, already. Right. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing something that's, uh, you know, the natural course of, of, of a family or some orchestrated uh, thing. It's very difficult to tell with this. I would lean towards a, a very real happening that they knew about for some time um, that they are acting on, right? In their own interest, they're acting on it. A part of it could be to protect, because this is, Pastor, it, it should be, is uh, the timing is a bit too close that stories are coming out, right? Right. A lot of people, a lot of rich people are being, are turning on each other, right? That's true. So what they're doing is, there, there are a lot of court cases. People are being drugged into these court cases, which makes their information public, which is going to be highly distasteful in the public's eye. Uh, this year, so in 2024, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's been involved in some things. Yeah, he has. Right? He has. You think? <clears throat> you know, you made a comment when uh, after Queen Elizabeth died that there's certain things can't be done except only under a king. That's right. Um, and do you think? No, that maybe, and that's that has certainly been established. And he was making his rounds. You know, whether it be in the climate. Uh, you know, or the World Economic Forum or, or these different, you know, he had a voice. He has a voice. Yes. But yeah. I feel like we might be since I sense a shift taking place. And this uh, the younger William Young uh, family, of course, his wife has been ill. And of course, she just had surgery and was in the hospital 17 days and hope she's OK now. But it you feel a shift. I don't know. I feel a shift. This is a young prince who could be king and would have many years to establish uh the kingdom and and uh yep. and, par- and probably plays a role in the end days well directives are given and if you take note he's been a loyalist right yes he uh, has he's a loyalist and he is not he is he is he is uh, you know he is a stickler for royal business so yep. if he has a directive he'll not deviate He's not going to go left or right, uh, no matter what the price is or cost is. He's not going to deviate. And if he has to, if he has to undo a nation, and so be it. And so that's the kind of guy, wow. um, the guy that's coming forward. Now, the, the sickness would allow for an out uh, right. to, install, to install a new, a brand new um, king there who is full of life and full of years, like you just said. Yeah, this could be an opportune thing there. And it does. It 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 you can almost sense a shift happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something that's uh evidently timed and something that the people are now gobbling up with sympathy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that could open up a door for the shift and, and to be a, a, a real easy transition and yeah. King Charles can go away basically, you know, without being scarred and uh, and maybe all the different uh, rumors uh, of his life not have to be brought out. Right. We know Andrew already yeah. has his issues, and you know, so what's going? I just want to get your take on it because it. I felt like we were watching this shift here, and I think it affects other nations. You brought it up; it affects other nations. Yes. Uh, and let's while we're talking about other nations, let's just do that for a second. Israel, the pressure's on BB like never before. They all want him to stop. Uh, he says, we're not going anywhere. We, we're going to finish this. We're almost there. A few more months and it's over. Hamas is done. Meanwhile, 31 rockets this evening crashed, came out of Hezbollah, out of southern Lebanon, hit the little town of Moran, Israel. Uh, are we getting ready to see another front open up fully? Well, first of all, I'll tell you something. The, uh, 
just to just to uh, bring some light on this subject, the U.S. Navy and, and, and um, Allied forces are really they really had their hands busy with the Houthis. Imagine that. Yeah, they have. That's unbelievable. It's very tasking, and it's not it's it's not like it used to be. It is not like it used to be. So these guys have access to, uh, you know, North Korean technology. They have access to. Um, obviously Russian slash Iranian technology. Um, yep. and they have lots of it, you know, stockpiled. Yep. They have already defied, or let's just say Iran acts in a, not, not so much a, a, uh, totalitarian position, uh, with the Houthis, but more of an advisory panel for the Houthis and the Houthis continue to engage in their own you know, their own uh, uh, operations, but it's becoming very tasking to the U.S. Navy. Um, Israel, they want, they want BB out of there. They want to, uh, the world is calling for disarmament of Israel, right? They want Israel to essentially totally and absolutely surrender. Uh, this is, the, the word is echoing too much in too many different countries now, um, which is very dangerous for Bibi Netanyahu. It's very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, right? So so none of us should be should overlook that. No. That you're if right. anybody ever got the chance, they will take him out. Right? You're this right. Is, this is an active thing now. Um and it's very close to home. Hezbollah Hezbollah has has been probing for a while now. Probing. And they have always had the capacity to sneak in uh, some of the fast movers uh, into uh, Israel, right? Yeah. These demonstrations, these probes, every time they hit Israel, believe me, they go, they go back and, 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 and they get all the data. All this data is going to more than a few places. Iran is collating, putting this data together. Perhaps because when they do officially uh, attack it's going to be from a, a multinational force that will go into Israel, right, all so, at one time. So you don't see it just being the the uh, Hezbollah, you know, Hamas, and now Hezbollah. You see, you see a bunch of them: Iran, Syria, oh, yeah. Iraq, oh, yeah. Russia, everybody. For example, Hamas has not quit. They haven't. Quit. No, I know they, they gather. Have. They're gathering intel, right? These right. guys probe. They gather intel. They share information. Uh, this is why some of their attacks have been so precise, right? They're not televising uh, some of these precise attacks. They're not televising right. the, the, the cost of life involved. We have soldiers, that maybe uh, soldiers that have died already on ships that are, you know, they're not, this isn't, that's not supposed to happen, right? So we have a casualty count building them. This and uh, this thing is broadening. It is worse than what they're televising, far worse. People are fatigued already. Commanders are, 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 every time they talk, commanders are saying, this is serious. You know, this is serious. This is getting, it's getting worse. Um, and, and which is why the Republican Party in the USA wants, um, they, they need uh, Biden to do something swiftly, right? Because it can right. see it getting out of control. It's spreading. It's getting bad. Uh, so we have a, we have a real situation here. And, and my opinion is, I do believe in history. It's going to be recorded that World War III has already begun. We're, we're going to see the dates of 2023 for World War III, right? Wow. Uh, because I, I normally, that. normally when wars start, not everybody is involved from the onset, right? It, it kind of, you have this, you know, certain people involved like Israel and, and uh, uh, but then when the big military factions, they get involved, then everybody recognizes it, right? Right now, we have a war that's not recognized right. as a world war. But in fact, that's precisely what we're dealing with. It is. A world war. China's next. It is next. a multi-front war. Yes. I mean, you're right. China, Taiwan. I mean, even in this bill that they didn't pass, but this bill that they were fighting over, a lot of money was going to Ukraine. A lot was going to go to Israel. A lot of it was going to go down to the southern border, but quite a bit of it was going to Thailand to protect themselves against an invasion from China. It's inevitable, isn't it? Is this the yeah. year, 2024, is this the year China makes some kind of military move 
to try to s- squeeze Taiwan or start to try to get them to concede that they need to join? The, uh, is this the year? Well, I believe that China's already begun. They've already, uh, they've all but controlled uh, what's actually operating with Taiwan, right? They understand the U.S. is involved, <clears throat> but they're controlling. They've kicked up patrols in the waters. They have uh, certain, certain guard positions, right? Yeah. Uh, no-go zones for everybody else. Uh, China is certainly squeezing and nobody can push China's hand back. They're also testing us when we go in and attempt to intervene, attempt to probe them. They probe us back Yeah. Uh, uh, even closer. We've had exchanges with China unofficially already. And um, so, so we have a lot of things, a lot of things are moving. A lot of mechanisms are now moving and colliding. So we have an issue. We have a situation. So your statement is, is uh, probably so this year. You know, I, I do believe we'll see an escalation. Um, it, it's unfortunate, but we could see an escalation beyond the point that anybody would like. It seems as if uh, you're right, and it and it's the timing is setting up, no doubt about it. Um, so we got to watch this. Speaking of Russia and Ukraine, uh, Russia disqualified the guy who was the number one candidate. That was, you know, their election for president is next month. Putin had had already got written one of his challengers. He's, he's sitting in prison for nine years. He'd been poisoned twice. There was a new guy who's an anti-war candidate, and he was rising in the polls. Well, he just got disqualified today. They said that uh, he's not qualified to even be on the ballot. This It's funny that that happened the same day that they were arguing at the Supreme Court whether Trump should be on the ballot. Uh, your thoughts? Well, in Russia, it's a repeat of what normally happens, right? Uh, Putin always gets rid of his uh, opposing <laughs> folks. He does. That's right. just the way he works. Um, he's, he's, he's got a lot of blood on his hands. But th- this Biden issue, you know, it should be obvious. Some things should be obvious to people today. It should be very obvious today. Number one, um, Speaking about Biden, he is, uh, he's, he's up there in age, right? Yes, yes. And so it's very difficult to be at that age and hold on to things. And cognitive decline can happen within the, within the with a span of about eight months to anybody, right? Anybody at that age, it can happen within an eighth month span. I mean, it's a weird Significant, drop. a significant. That's right. Yeah, okay. That's right. And so nobody, nobody that age is off the list. Right. So th- there should be real concerns. But as far as Colorado, you know, make that move towards Trump. Now, that sets a very dangerous precedent yeah. because here's what would happen. Suppose by, I don't know, some, I don't know, it, it's a because it's a slim chance uh, that they're going to have what they want to have. But suppose Colorado gets away with that and they go, they remove him from the ballot. Then all of a sudden, the red states are going to remove Biden from the ballot. Yeah, they will. Then other blue states are going to have the they're going to have the burden of uh, of being uniform with Colorado and remove Trump off a further ballot, which means states or or the let's just say the 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 judges of those states will have power so much so that they can they can force the outcome of elections. They can determine who can and cannot win an election. No, that's not going to happen. You see how sticky that is? Yeah. If Colorado gets away with this, right, other states will follow suit one way or the other. And if that happens, then a state can dictate who can be president. Yeah. That can never be. I can't, can never be. I can't see and the so, Supreme Court. I, you know, I listened to that, all that, uh, what was it, almost three hours. I listened to about an hour and a half of the argument that these uh, Colorado attorneys were, were trying to do it. And, and all nine of the Supreme Court justices were pushing back. I mean, it, it, yeah, of course, yes. It, it's like, look, you're, you're, you can't have one state deciding who the president of the United States is going to be. And, <laughs> you know, so I think they were really overreaching. I think Colorado, Maine, and these other states, you know, it's all going to, I would say the Supreme Court will, uh, shut that down. But that's not the end of it. The, 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 you have more trials coming to disqualify Trump. Do you think that that's going to end or are they going to 
Will they actually convict him of something? They will attempt. They will try. But take note of something. Take note. Um, you know, it's the old trick to keep the pressure on in hopes to discourage the forward momentum of an individual. They've already tried to change public opinion through prosecution. That did not work. And it's very clear, you know, tactic there it didn't work. And so what they, you know, they really should. They're going to continue to do this uh, until they cannot. But what I see happening is, is you know, you can, you can, at first, it looks like they're upholding the law, but then it's a bit too much. And when you go overboard and you're working by ego and pride, your plan's going to fail every single time. And so um, in this case, there, you know, Trump could, could be elected president even as a convicted felon. And that just might very well happen. As president, as a convicted felon, in which case, you know, if that happens, here's why they don't want that to happen, though. They're trying to stop it. If that ever happens, somebody will come along and pardon Trump from, from, yeah. from that status, right? They will right. overturn it because he served as president. Right. You can't have that. And so uh, they know it's a lost cause. Is so what they're trying to do is, is, is find every single reason they can. If you notice, uh, back when he was president with the, um, all these people, they came out suing each other, right? right. I mean, all across the board, lost people going to jail. Yeah. Well, it's going to happen again on a brand new level. And they're going to hope to pull people into it. They need some notable convictions of well-known people, right, to try another tactic. They will try it. So these other folks are going to simply be, you know, their parts in a machine, no matter how rich they are, somebody's pulling the strings behind the scene and you're going to have some high powered individuals. They're going to jail. Well, at least they'll say they're going to jail. Nobody's ever going to confirm that. Right. But, uh, because they're going to continue to try this now, but this is dangerous. We're in dangerous times because look at what we actually face. If, if. Say if Trump and Biden, for some reason, are still on the ballot, right? People vote, and let's say, let's say that uh, Trump wins, right? Uh, he wins. You know, and I know that if he wins, they're going to do the exact same thing that was done to them. They're going to say, you know, somebody cheated somewhere. This, that, and the other. It's going to put civilians up in arms. That's what's going to happen. People will defend sure. the outcome for Trump. Number one, yeah. let's say Trump loses. Let's say he loses and Biden wins. Now, every, even the Democrats understand that that President Biden is going through a severe cognitive decline. Big moment. time. We all know. And so if he wins, what's that? Then what in the world are people thinking? So they're going to say, well, something is not right there. People will be up in arms at one another again. So in both those scenarios, you're going to have the civilian populace up in arms and each other, right? But this there's one good. scenario nobody suspects. What's that? One scenario that can absolutely happen. If a medical crisis overcomes the president, now he's, he's in his 80s, yeah, right? It could happen. So guess what? At any moment, they can say the president is having a medical crisis, whether he is or not. Guess what happens? So a brand new candidate that nobody knows about comes out of the shadows right to the forefront. And it will be legal, 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 right? To go up against whoever. I'm just telling you what I know. So that means at least Biden off the hook is president. So are you saying still saved and intact, <laughs> but a brand new, a brand, a brand new, new, I mean, a brand candidate. new person. That's uh, right. I mean, you know, we hear things and I'm, you're not talking Kamala Harris either. I mean, no, she, no. Okay. No. But she could end up being president here in this, this, for a few months this year before it's all said and done. Uh, if this medical emergency or a medical uh, declaration or something happens or, or Article 25 or whatever. But we know that they're looking at California Governor Gavin Newsom as one candidate. We hear that Michelle Obama is another one they'd love to draft into this. Uh, so you're saying maybe there's someone else or another one or two, but you're saying somebody fresh, somebody brand new, no baggage, uh could be brought into right. the table and and try to take Trump down using a brand new uh, the, the Rock right. uh, uh, right. Johnson uh, I forgot his first name but uh, the Rock you know they they're trying to get him to run I mean I don't know yeah that won't happen but no. but but with if the president 
has some sort of medical crisis, right? Yep. They never have to show his face again. They never have to report or he never has to uh, go through anything again. So effectively, he can still be president, right? Right. Uh, or have presidential powers with his VP for the, you know, for the rest of that duration. Right. But you'll have a brand new guy who does not have to go through the crucible um, yeah. that they normally have to go through to be a candidate for president of yeah. the United States. And it could be anybody. It, it will, it, you know, what if one of these corporate individuals comes forward? Okay. Who, by the way, has already really established a, quite an empire outside of government. What if one of them steps forward? Right, like a somebody Jeff, that, like a Jeff somebody Beast. with a good track record. Okay, right? somebody who's serious, somebody who understands, you know, uh, uh, quite a few things. That could just shake the waters up terribly. Yeah, it really could. Yeah, and and it would also give people a focal point of something new, of something that has longevity. Hold because different. let's go ahead and face it, the one thing against President Trump is his age. Yes, because because four years from now. Right, four, yeah. eight years from now, hey, we're back in the same seat again. Right, we're back in the same position again. And uh, you know, let's go ahead and face it: as you age, you're not as sharp as what you were when you were younger. Doesn't matter who. It you don't are. matter who you are. That's uh, right. It just starts going away, and it will show, and they will pounce on that. And the people, even some of the Republicans out there, if they had a qualified younger candidate. That was actually qualified. Somebody who's not vindictive and, and, and right. who has the right, you know, quality sets this, that, and the other. Um, a lot of people would float over to this new candidate, but it would have to be somebody who could do what Trump has done and more, right? Because Trump actually, he, he was a performer. So he did right. things, right? He was always active. Right. And, and that's what they're looking for. Somebody who can get things, somebody who will actually stand up and start working, not just sit there and point fingers, you know, the, this stuff. So, uh, yeah. But, but you got some this, guys. With the you Biden got, issue. Yeah. <clears throat> You've got some that. guys out there. You've got Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, from Amazon. You've got Bill Gates from Microsoft. you got Elon Musk. Uh, and, you know, you got you got some billionaire, multi, multi, multi billionaires. Mm. They're, they got. They all seem to have some baggage, but uh, you know they, they are a force. And then how come uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, the the Democrats don't? Even, I know he. I know he finally just went independent. But man, they don't even want to put him on television. They, they won't even talk to this guy. Uh, is he just because he represents the old Kennedy uh, dynasty, and they just can't deal with that? I mean, w w I think I, I, the 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 Democrats. Um, some of the representatives of the Democratic Party that people see on TV and everything else, they, they are vicious. Uh, sometimes they are. And it's almost like they want, they're not used to people speaking outside of a certain type of language. Right? They cut everybody off if you don't speak a certain type of language. And they don't, Robert Kennedy Jr., he keeps referring back to right. the secrets, you know, certain secrets of America. They don't want to hear They don't that. want to hear that. They don't, they don't want, want those out. No, right? no. They don't. All they want to hear is somebody who can speak about, you know, the stuff they have overcome. Right. That's what they want. And and so, uh, you know, it, it's a tact. It's politics. That's what politics is. Right. And, um, but yeah, they, they don't. They Speaking don't of that, there. what do you think about Tucker Carlson? Okay. He was in Russia. It looks like he must have interviewed Vladimir Putin. I, I heard today he met with Edward Snowden. Uh, and at some point, Tucker's going to come out with these interviews. What do you, what do you think his reasoning is? Uh, is? Is he just wanting to get back at everyone and say, look, I can go where places you can't go? Or what's his agenda here? Well, he, he's not. He's a pretty smart guy. Yeah, he's, he is. Yes, he is. But, but he also made it. Right. Yeah. He made it. He knows how to make it. He knows he's protecting his uh, future. Right. Right. If you take money away, these guys wouldn't do what they do. Let's right. put it that way. OK, so yeah, they got to have cash to operate yeah. the way they operate. Yeah. And, and, and without Fox as his platform, he has to keep creating a platform. Yeah. And he's doing he it. He's doing it with his uh, ability to get a door open right. that maybe others can't open. So, That's right. yeah, I, I go along with that. Okay, now the stone steps. I, I mentioned that earlier. I really think that I, you know, based on what 
God showed you, you know, four years ago, or maybe it was even longer than that. Um, and I thought about it today when I was looking at the Supreme Court building. But really, I'm thinking that the J6, the Jack Smith uh, t- uh, trial uh, with Trump, that uh, we may see the stone steps before 24 is over. Uh, and you're saying that won't what, are you saying that won't matter? He'll he could still be president even with uh, five felonies. Well, he could with a conviction. He can yeah. still be uh, president, but pastor they they have people working, digging, looking, and uh, unfortunately, let's go ahead and face this this one thing. You know, at some point, at some point, evil right is going to overcome the certain goods in these kingdoms dealing with the kingdoms not with not with christians directly i'm talking about the will of 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 good versus the will of evil because we do have dark kingdoms rising we do have that matter of perdition and the road is being paved for this guy to come forward uh which means for for a season just for a season god will allow that dark kingdom to rise in order for that to happen. They're going to have to have their way. They're going to have to be able to say yeah. peace and safety. They're going to have to be able to, you know, institute their will over everybody else's. And, but, you know, so that means folks who represent, uh, some of the cries of the people like Trump does, right. Despite of what anybody thinks, um, Trump does represent a certain portion of the populace yeah, he does. who had no voice whatsoever. Right. They, yeah. didn't, they had yeah. no voice. And so he is, he, you know, nobody's perfect in, in, he wasn't raised in politics or anything like that. He's a business guy. Right. And so, but they, he's, he's dangerous to the institution because of his deal making abilities, because of how he can maneuver people, right? How he can communicate or connect with people. They speak legal jargon. Nobody wants to hear that. It makes people <laughs> yeah. sick. They you don't. turn on television, you start hearing them, you know, pronounce yeah, everything we don't in want specific to hear it. It ways. Makes them sick. And you get sick to you. Like I've heard all this before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, you've heard it all before. Yeah. But you you hear President Trump, he's engaging. Yeah. And and so you can actually hear him, but you start hearing these other people. Right. Uh, it, they speak the same monotone stuff. And nobody, right. Legally, you know, people are tired of that stuff. So he's a huge, huge threat. They don't want him to ever have uh, uh, be in that position again where he can maneuver people because he'll get even more. And uh, they're going to do everything they can to stop him. Well, we just they seen will. him pull off one. And that was these bipartisan the in the Senate. Uh, some of the rhino Republicans and the Democrats got together and they, and they were going to bring forth a bill that they thought was going to just fly right through. No problem. And then Trump said, it's a bad deal, bad deal. And so next thing you know, the house said, look, we don't want we don't want to touch this thing. And that, that has got the establishment in Washington furious that they're, they're probably thinking this guy is not even in the white house and he's controlling the house of representatives. They they don't like that. They don't like that at all. And it, it, it does listen though, but the people, if the people support him, they can't say anything. Can no, they? they can't say a thing. No, that's what they're they saying. And so that's the war right there. You have people who want one thing and government who interprets the will of the people. They can't get away with that anymore. You know, when somebody stands up there and says, well, what the people really want, well, how do you know? You didn't call those people up. You didn't, you didn't talk to them. <laughs> right. And people know they're, they're saying right through it, but president Trump, he can actually connect with people. Amen. You know, it's not, it's not easy being involved in sales and things like that. You can't do that and not know people. You've got to know people right. to engage in sales. And, and of course, Donald Trump is that, uh, he's that individual. He's that so guy. They don't like him. They don't like him. He's a threat to that, that dark plus. Let's go ahead and look at the truth. Do you want to look at the truth? Sure. When it comes to agendas, right, to abomination-type agendas, then who owns those agendas? Well, it's, not the, it's not the conservatives. No, it's not the conservatives. It's not. It isn't. And so it's a, it's, it's, they continue to push that stuff. So you're looking at people who, and believe me, they support what people don't understand, Past Paul. The Super Bowl. For example, the Super Bowl. Okay. You have, you have Taylor Swift. Right. 
they keep showing, they keep showing, they keep showing, they keep showing, right? So she's a favorite of what's established. Right. You think that could determine the outcome of the Super Bowl? Absolutely. You think it has determined the outcome of the Super Bowl? It has definitely because, put Kansas City uh, it's in. going to be a lot of introduction of demonic things. This Super Bowl directly to the people, and the people are not going to care. They're not. I'm wow. telling you right now. You're what? What people are going? You know what they're going to see? They're going to see a lot of um, almost like a underworld princess being friends with demons will be part of that theme. Wow. Or conjuring them up will be part of that theme. And people, they're not going to care. They're not. Wow. They, they will not care. And it's, it's going to be happening right before their faces. They won't even care. We see that in the Grammys. We see that sometimes that kind of stuff uh, a lot of times in these big events. And so we'll have our eyes open. Uh, I'm also going to be watching the, the, the Super Bowl commercials because a lot of stuff, predictive programming goes on to, in there uh, a lot of times. So keep, The richest guys in the world, right, are mm -hmm. involved in entertainment. They pay for entertainment. Um, and then, of course, because they have to make all that stuff before, they make anybody makes a dime. They're, they paid people before anybody makes a dime. And if you look at the books on the entertainment, that stuff costs trillions of dollars, not billions, trillions of dollars. Unbelievable. And so they're paying that, right? So you better believe they have, they have, they have craft over that whole thing, right? To cause people, because what they want the people to do is feel a specific way when they entertain, when they view entertainment. And, um, for the most part, it works. It, it, it is, um, it is. But even that, 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 that will, that, that should be obvious to everybody this time around, you know, we'll it, be, things are going to become quite we'll be, brazen. We'll be watching. I'm going to take you to Iceland for a second, uh, Mike, if you don't mind. Uh, third time, third time's a charm. This volcano oh, erupts again. Yeah. It's a two mile fissure. Won't I they mean, listen. what's going on, Mike? They won't listen. Well, you know, when they said, oh, yeah, it's slowing down, it'll be over shortly. That's not what we said on your show. Right, basketball. right. You didn't. And um, so this thing is, is has multiple chambers underneath it. Right? I'm telling you, this is a, that's the last place you want to erupt because it really, um, you really demonstrate. It's not going to stop, the, is it? You don't see it stopping. No, it's, it, it really is about, I'd say about um, seven or eight Yellowstones. Stacked on top of each other. <laughs> well, are you serious, Mike? You yeah. know how big yes. that is to say that. But you're saying that whole that whole Iceland and, and area is really nothing but one big huge yeah. uh volcano. And you're, you're literally you're literally looking at chambers stacked on top of each other, each the size of Yellowstone. What? Are you serious though? Really? Yes. You're not going to find that in the data. You're not. No. But through observation and through the sheer crumbling power of this thing, people will see it. Mm. They'll see it. Because, it's because they'll say, it's, it's when that land, if that land, if, if those, if that continues to open up basketball, that's directly relatable to the Atlantic tier, right? Yeah. And we had an earthquake. That's going to be the beginning of the end. We had of all an earthquake of what we know. today. Just uh, just a little bit off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Cape Canaveral here in Florida, 4.0. It's the largest earthquake in Florida in about 50 years. Okay, just off the coast, and I was and I thought of you. I thought of the Atlantic Ocean and you talking about this huge, uh, you know, uh, uh, fault line that's running through the Atlantic, and then now you're bringing up Iceland blowing up. Is this tied to this? Is is this is it tied to that? You, we're going to have uh, the Atlantic, that crack in the Atlantic grows every year, still spitting up nickel. Nickel is coming up from this thing. And um, Iceland, unfortunately, is is a all throughout the years, it has proven to be problematic at best. Um, I want to know the worst case scenario, but this, this, those chambers underneath Iceland, uh, Paris Paul, they, in fact, on that entire line 
uh, if you were to go from north to south, is is a very dangerous and volatile area. It will cause, if it continues to crack, it's going to cause a plate shift, a big plate shift, right? Now you're, a plate shift, forget about a big earthquake. Okay. Think about, think about a bunch of, uh, you know, four to five to 6.0 earthquakes nonstop for about three days. No. I mean, yes. okay. So you, uh, you're okay. talking about a rumbling, a, a real, some real problems here, right? Real rumbles. Because in, in, in people, they know about the big earthquakes. They know about the 8.0s and 9.0s. A lot of people, that's what they're looking for. But they have forgotten that if you have a small 4.5 earthquake, for a much longer duration, you've essentially had three or four 9.0, uh, 9.0 earthquakes, right? It will do much more damage. Um, in Iceland's case, it, it is so, it's stacked, but it's very deep, right? Now, that Atlantic crack is very deep. And both of them, obviously, are, are coming from that same uh, internal point. Both of them are. So both are tied to a telltale sign of a continental instant, continental uh, shift if they were to continue to crack like this. So the activity in Iceland is is just not going to stop. It's not going to stop. Wow. It's going to continue to. Well, right uh, here behind me, this is the first time it erupted. This picture behind me is actually the first time. It is the, it is the second time was big. Th this one, huge. It's bigger than this. Uh, and, uh, I don't, and what you're saying is the potential, the potential, the kinetic energy that's building could be catastrophic, cataclysmic, could destroy part of Northern Canada. Am I right by saying that? Oh yeah, good. It has, it does because it is, I'll say it again. It's like seven yellow stones stacked on top of each other, right below that, you know, major landmass. Of course, obviously that's going to be disputed. Right. But I'm telling you now, it'll start doing things that nobody expected. It will, because the more magma that flows up this, this thing, there's not enough. That, what is that? The, the eruptions that it's had right now does right. not constitute the sheer amount of magma that's found in the chambers. You know, it's kind of like New York City. Uh, nobody thinks of a, uh, of, a, of a magma chamber when you think of New York City. They've got a giant magma chamber below New York City. Now, how long before that thing surfaces? Right? I, th that right there. And that would be, there's 20 million people over there. I mean, you know, in that vicinity. Maybe more than it, that. It's not going to stop the magma. Magma continues to churn and eat away at the rock. It's coming up. The pressure is building. The solar winds are feeding uh, this earth energy every single second of every single day. And it's overcharged, you know, with that, all that energy, all the solar winds, everything that the earth is capturing coming into the poles is, is being, is that's heat is generating heat, which causes magma, right. To expand, to become hotter, to eat away at more and more rock. Right. So we're, we're this, this uh, cycle is not going to go backwards. It's not the earth is overcharged right now. It's estimated it would take 400 years for the earth to, to to cool back down from where it's been 400 years of heating it would take to dissipate the energy it has collected in less than about i believe they said five years i believe the calculations are five years so it has it is uh essentially taking in enough energy to last the earth 400 years of internal heating right think so, of that so let's think of that okay that's just off the chart so now let's let's take this put this all in perspective we have wars and rumors of wars right now that seem to be going off the charts, headed toward World War III. But meanwhile, we have earthquakes and volcanoes breaking records. We have asteroids. Matter of fact, tonight, we got an asteroid tonight. I didn't even bring it up. It's going to miss us by 0.6 lunar distance. In other words, about half the distance from the moon. This is happening almost every day now. We know that, we've, that, that Apophis is on its way, the god of chaos. We don't know how close, 18,000 miles, you know, what if they're off, what if their calculations off a of hair? I mean, it's, and it's bringing a lot of rocks with it. I think it's going to be a Revelation 8-8 eight, eight, uh, prophecy, Wormwood prophecy could easily happen. So what I'm saying is, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Does man 
blow himself up or, or really, really create a radiation environment uh, with nuclear uh, detonations? Or does the earth itself melt with fervent heat like it says in the book of Second Peter chapter 3 uh, from the sun with all of its, you know, the sun. Planet X, we've been talking about it. What's the effects on pl- of Planet X? I think we're watching it. Volcanoes, frigid temperatures, hot summers you can't breathe, uh, straight line winds, this atmospheric river in California. I don't know. Where do you want to start? I'm locusts. I mean, where do you start? It's, uh, you know what? The war, the war is coming. It is coming. And the, look, look at how it was when we were children, right? Okay. How blue the skies were, how yeah. different everything was compared to right now. People just get used to it, basketball, right? They get used to it. California, the atmosphere at Riverside are yeah. coming in. Yeah. They have what? They have five more that are coming through. No. Five. five no. Five, five, no. Five. Yes. No. They five more. Mike, so, these two was the worst. 13 inches of rain and 12 hours. Are you telling me there's five more of these type of And I'll also say, here's something on. I'm going to tell you right now. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. They're going to look back on these days and say, I wish we would have kept every single drop. Well, that's true. They had one year's worth of, well, pretty much one year's worth of rain in one night. Right? I I know they they say the accurate numbers are three quarters, but you may as well say they had a year's worth of rain in one night. Right? So they have five more events coming that they can see five more that they can see are they going to be um, pretty soon here i mean are we going to see the oh spring? yeah they're forming now they, okay you know, they're coming now they're going to be these atmospheric rivers back to back but it's a blessing arizona is going to be here with it too arizona is going to have water problems but it's a blessing pastor because after all this water after yeah. all these atmospheric rivers yeah the water is going away even in the midst of a water event we can't drink salt water no we i can't know do that and is that the current, yeah. that's that uh, intrusion, uh, saltwater intrusion? Is that what's well, yeah, we have that. We've been that's been a constant problem. We can but... drink salt water though. I mean, Israel's taking it and they're they're taking the ocean water and they're making well, they have desalination plants. Why don't we, right? Uh, we do, we do, but they're not think of it this way if salt water takes over, right? If it really takes over, it's going to cause damage. Uh, to these coastal cities, unfortunately. Yeah, you're right. So a desalination plant, there's certain mechanisms you can't have, you know, fully saturated. Plus, and oh, and also, salt water kills vegetation. Yeah, you're right. right? Yes, you're right. Uh, so we're going to have to face all that. It's happening. And, and most, but the Mississippi River, right? This year, take a good look at it, right? Take a good look this year. That's all I can say. Take a real good look. Take pictures. Do Because it's going to dry because, up. Um, uh, you know, things are changing. Dry, rapidly. Earthquake, or, or it's going to dry up, or it, you know, we just won't. We're not going to have it. And if we're, you know what, we're out of time. We're out of time. We're we're a bit too laxed. We're out of time. There are people right now, literally, literally, they cannot sleep, Pastor Paul, because they don't know what the next move should well, be. That's true. That's true. But they're, they're, they're trying to stop stave off. Are there scientists yeah. that they're can't trying sleep? to stave off? Uh, they're trying to stave off or come up with some solution. Here's the issue, though. They know that things are happening rapidly. Every time they look in one direction, it comes from behind them. Every time they go behind them, it comes from the left or to the right. It's so many things are starting to happen all at one time. They cannot keep track, and they certainly can't help to avoid it. The Army Corps of Engineers are overtasked with the Mississippi, with the East Coast. And now uh, Washington State, right? They're overtasked with that, uh, trying to prop up the coastal waterways. They're overtasked. The, the the U.S. the East Coast of the U.S. the entire East Coast is being propped up right now, right? The Army Corps of Engineers is hi- highly active in that. Um, it's just not working out. Say it's been a fight for many years to stop working out. Mike, we also talk a little bit here. Of- of the earth wobbling, the core of the earth not spinning, um, the binary system, planet X, or, or the binary system that's that's affecting our sun. Uh, these things are not slowing down, are they? Mm-mm. And and no. has the core of the no, earth, has it stopped? Did it, did it, no. 
Okay. It's still going. Okay. It's still going. But but we're, we're we're just having some strange effects, Pastor Paul, with uh, um, essentially overcharging the earth, right? The magnetosphere, for example, yeah. is what, 10 or 11 earth, earths out. So if you take 10 or 11 earths on the bow shock, looking at the bow shock, the magnetosphere is about 10 or 11 earths out. It's that's pretty way big too and in the far. back is pretty big. Is that pretty far? Well, that's, that's how far the magnetosphere goes. That's natural, it's how far it goes. And it's being compressed on the front side, yeah. you know, facing the sun. But it, it, it normally is about, you know, 10 or 11 out. So is and that normally the, the TV, yeah. right, the energy that's being found in that area is constant. You know, that energy has doubled in the last uh, five years. So the earth has taken on a lot more power. It will cause magnetosphere to fail or shift in a way. Right? Well, the, the bow shock yeah. is not going to maintain. It's just not going to maintain. It's a miracle that, that um, we have that bow shock today. It, well, it, radiation is right. going to keep building then, isn't it? Uh, it yeah. It, with Inside the, the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have dormant volcanoes wake up like the big one, Tom um, <laughs> and other ones. I'll have to continue to mention that because that's going to be one of the number one killers of this planet. You, you bring, you're very good at bringing things up and then, and then coming back, bring up again, bring again, because when you know something is going to take place, and then it might be three, four, five years later, the very thing you brought up happens. Um, uh, a, a lot of people don't have the patience to wait, to step back and wait and see what's developing. Uh, like, for instance, you know, I know the dreams you had about the stone steps and the coffin. I think the stone steps were really at the brink of it here before the year is over. I think you're going to see Trump being uh, brought down. Uh, be, he's going to be indicted by something. I promise you he's going to get some type of conviction. I don't know if that keeps him out of the White House or not, but I'm going to say this. He will get convicted of something. That's part of the plan. It's partly why Nikki Haley's hanging around, just in case. Uh, she's trying to be there to catch catch him when he falls i guess and take his spot but besides that the coffin the coffin is this is the what's your thoughts on that because that's a significant event you know this of all of them i i really don't want to see the stone steps because of what comes after because of what i saw the people do yeah what did you see Tell, remind us because, well right right during the stone steps people were implacable you could not make peace with people during that time they were they were, they were extreme either for or against that's right they couldn't and at that same time evidently uh missiles started coming into the usa during that time from the air right from russia so we, who's 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 sending those in here china it's, russia? It's, I, I think that everybody was trying to send them <laughs> that's what i believe i do listen yeah. which means at the time of when we're so turn inwardly right we have a lot of enemies the usa has a lot of enemies they're going to take advantage the first chance they get either you know there are admirals who cannot sleep because of that they know that right there, there are, yeah, there are they people know. who there are generals who cannot sleep because of china because they know the power of china and they know how china probes and they know what we're facing they know what happens if we're ever distracted we're going to be hit from all sides if we're ever distracted, well, right? Because we have essentially commanded the world. And we have essentially done that, commanded the world for a long time, for a long time. But now it's like we're losing our responsible position, right? You take the police out of a city, you're gonna have chaos in that city. And that's essentially what's happening is somehow we're being disarmed. Somehow we've lost our reputation somehow, right? There's no respect. For, for the military of the USA anymore. Somehow this has happened that the Houthis would attack a U.S. naval battleship, right? Somehow, somehow things have changed. That's crazy. Drastically. And they're doing it boldly. Yes, as, they are. As if they've gotten yes, they are. new technology or they've been given at least better yes, sophisticated are. equipment. And and we still seem like our hands are tied behind our back. Am, am I wrong by saying that? But It is many of them said what the who some of the tactics the houthis have used were not expected by us we did not expect the houthis to have those tactics and to be this strong we did not expect hezbollah 
to be able to penetrate things that penetrated. We did not expect Iran to be so crafty as far as technology is concerned, right? So we're hitting these walls where we did not expect our enemies to be as mature and as advanced and as lethal as they are, which means we underestimated everything. Our That's arrogance, what it means. it's arrogancy on our That's part. That's what it means. We sat like we, we, we sat like Kings for too long until we begin to complain. You know, it's the old adage. If, if somebody has freedom too long and they're too blessed, why do we start complaining? Israel did it. Uh, you know, all of us have examples in our lives and we do the same thing. We start complaining about everything, right? Until the person who loses everything and they get the smallest thing that they're, they're, they're so thankful. And it's the, it is, it's the adage of the restaurant fastball. You get a hungry guy in a restaurant, you can serve him anything. He'll eat it. He's going to be happy. very thankful. Right. But you get somebody who's full going into a restaurant, you serve them something, they're going to send it back 20 times. They're, they're going to complain about everything. Why? Because they're not hungry. Right. When you're hungry, you're thankful for the food you get. You are. When you're full, you complain about the food you get. And America has been full for a long time. Right. Yep. The only way we can ever uh, get our position back is be hungry. We're going to have to be made hungry for a little season so that we can be thankful once again, so we can be put back in our position. I think that that's coming. I think that by our own demise, by our own uh, corruption, by our own spoiledness and, and, uh, and our own, we have turned from God. I yes, mean, we, we got so many people that are in seats of authority that are committing abominations or promoting abominations, and I really mean this, to the to the point that it's stench in the nostrils of God. And I don't know how much longer we think we can actually just get away with this and not have the judgment of God. At some point, you know, oh, I, it's coming. It's coming. It's got to be. You can't. It's God's coming. not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall it's he also coming. reap. And America is sowing seeds of disgust, seeds of disrespect, toward their heavenly father, toward the creator. And you can't get away with that forever. Um, we're not the only nation. We got a lot of good people in this country. And maybe that and the fact we stand with Israel and some of those things is the only thing holding back the judgment of God. But at some point, we got to turn, we got to either repent or perish. I mean, at some point, am I right? Yeah, and it's true. We, we've got to get it. You know, we've, we've, we've turned, God has his word. Right. Yep. It's the word. I know I seek God. I want to know what God wants. That's what I want. Right. I, want I want his word. But now in this day and age, Pastor, it's too many, too many things going out with the individual's philosophy, individual's idea, the individual's this, the individual's that. And, and so they've just totally kicked God's word out to the curbs and they don't want to hear God's word. They want no, to hear their don't. own word, you know. And um, but the Lord has correction for that. For the righteous say, I believe he will correct America. It, it, nobody's going to like it. But it, at least he'll do it. I mean, that's better than being be a, a nation. Correction. The yeah. Bible says a nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. The, the Bible says that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. That's right. I mean, this is these are the reality here that we thank God that we've got people right here on this broadcast that love the Lord. That thank God there are Christians throughout this nation who are still praying and believing and standing on the word, and God sees that and He honors that. Um, but at the same time, uh, we got to have some repentance. We need revival. We really do. And it's not just only us. Take a look at Europe. Look at the godlessness. Look what's going on around the world. Jesus, oh, yeah. Jesus has got to be coming back soon, Mike. He's coming back soon. Well, I tell you what, all these things were about to see the hostilities, the, the, the spiritual manifestations uh, is going to be needful. If, if we didn't need it, God would not permit it. And so, but we do need it. Amen. And so people all get ready for it. things like planet X. They can call it what they want to call it. They cannot believe, you know, it doesn't matter. Right, right. They're still going to have the effects of it. Right. They're going to have the effects. They're going to see the change of it. And when people see, when they definitively see, uh, these physical changes take place. It's going to be, I got to remind people, we walk by faith, not by proof. But when you start seeing things, when there's no doubt 
that the spiritual realm is real. Uh, you no longer have to, you know, believe that by faith. That means that window of grace is closing. Yeah. That means we're at the end of something. And so I hope that people understand that the worse things get, right? The more things will have been proven and the less grace that, that we're going to start to encounter. There will come a time where there'll be no more. There'll be no more forgiveness wherever a person is. That's where they're going to be. That's where they're going to be. And that's, we know that's that day of God's wrath. When it pours out, those people who endure God's wrath are, we're stuck. And so, but, uh, that's those why, times could come quicker than we anticipate. Amen. That's why we want to be on the winning side, folks. And that, and the only way to be on the winning side is be in the will of God by accepting his son, Jesus Christ and serving him and living for the Lord and doing the right things. Mike, what, what are we going to talk about next week? What, what, is there something brewing? Is there something on the horizon? We better be watching, be awake. I don't know. Besides that earthquake on the, well, let's just say I'm, I'm expecting something on the 10th uh, to affect the earth. Besides that, I believe we'll have every subject to talk about. Yeah, people are, like, look, Pastor Paul, we're going to have a magnetic anomaly, uh, uh, right? Okay. Now, every time, every time we have a magnetic anomaly, people lose their tempers. They lose their uh -oh. tempers. Uh -oh. So expect something along those lines to take place with someone, you know, where people finally blow their top, go over the edge, do right. something of that nature. Right. Um, yeah. I so, expect that. I so really around do the tenth, the tenth of February, we might have a magnetic earth issue. It'll be a, it'll be an Earth issue first. Yeah. It will ultimately turn into a, you know, some type of aggression issue with both people and humans, humans and animals. Animals. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mike, thanks a lot tonight. I appreciate you mm. taking the time. I mean, we touched a, a lot of subjects. We did. But, but, but I tell you what. And don't laugh at Joe. I'm not Don't laughing at Joe. I'm not like, hey. He, he did say, he did say, you know, red and green states. He Cognitive did. decline is a serious I'm thing. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I, I'm very careful and about he's, that. And uh, he's, he's, uh, well, you know, it's almost something you can discern. It's almost something we can discern that his, his time, his time is. He's frustrated. Is, I watched his press conference yeah. tonight. He was very yeah. angry. He doesn't like his own side of turning on him. He doesn't, nobody would. No. Nobody would want to hear that. Uh, his politics is awful as far as I'm concerned, but he's still, uh, the man in office and he yeah. is a human being who is struggling with a mental decline and we should not, uh, make uh, light of that because right. uh, our day is coming. If we, if we see a heavy set guy with the ears, uh, we're in trouble. That's all I'm saying. A heavy set guy with the Watch ears. Out. That's right. Uh, Jerry Nadler. I don't know. I'll start Watch looking out. around. I'll start. <laughs> All right, Mike. Appreciate you coming on tonight and being with us. God bless you, Pastor Paul. God bless. It's always an honor. Thank you. The honor's mine. Right. Believe me. Bless you so much. God bless. God bless.